thank you for the creative introduction. <laughs> I asked you what you wanted me to say. <laughs> all right, uh, thanks everyone. Um, so yes, this, this session tonight is all about open data, open innovation. I'm from Newcrest Mining and wanted to give, I guess, a perspective on this from the other side of affairs, from industry. Um, looks like we've got a bit of a mix of representation from the innovation community as well as industry. Um, so before I kick off, I'd like to just run a small video to give a snapshot of how we see Sorry, right. go for it. Hey you. As a Newcrest team member, do you know we are an industry leader in problem solving and accelerated innovation through the use of crowdsourcing? So, what is crowdsourcing and when do we need it? We often have a lot of great ideas, but not always the time, resources or expertise to work on them. This is where we can lean on crowdsourcing where people outside the increase come together using their unique skill sets to solve our problems. All right, so that little animation is probably a, a broad stroke view of how Newcrest sees open innovation. We, we understand that there's a lot of good ideas in the business, uh, but we need to get a bit more creative about how we get some of those things solved. It's not that the people in the business don't necessarily have the skills, um, it's just that there's a day job to be done there's plenty of ideas, plenty of opportunity, and we need to go out to an external community to, to capitalise on that opportunity to solve those problems. All right, uh, we, Newcrest is on board with open data and open innovation, and I don't want to spend tonight going too deep into open data. I'm not the person to speak about that. There's other people tonight who can probably give a much more informed view. Um, I really want to avoid industry 4.0 slides, I want to avoid what does a digital mind look like slides, so there'll be, there'll be none of that. Uh, instead, I want to spend tonight answering this question. Don't get hung up on artificial intelligence as a term, it's just, uh, I think we all know what, what we're trying to say there. Uh, and the question is, why isn't the use of artificial intelligence rapidly transforming the resources industry, when we've seen what it's done to other sectors? Uh, for those in industry, hopefully some of the things that we've learned, um, you can take away some, some learnings from that so you don't have to trip over where we already have. And for the innovators, um, it's about providing some context about how industry works uh, so that when you're approaching us with, with your ideas, you have a bit, more, um, a bit more context and understanding why we act the way we do. So starting with problems. Problems are problems in themselves. Um, People aren't necessarily great at framing problems, and I'll just go through a very quick example. Uh, you're approaching someone in the resources industry, you might approach a poor treatment manager, and he'll say, I've got this pump that continues to fail. Right? So the data scientist says, I'll come up with a predictive algorithm to see how we can let you know when that failure is happening, so you can have a controlled shutdown to replace it. Great, you come up with a fantastic solution, but what you don't solve is the real problem which is that pump is still failing 40 times a year. You're predicting when that's gonna happen, but you're still having 40 failures a year. It's not great for an operation. What that lends into is this piece. Now, if anyone, do we have like a hands up for how many are from the sort of innovator side here? A couple of, couple of hands, all right. Um, what happens is you might start working on something and you might start working on that pump prediction issue. But then what happens? Two months later, it drops off. There's no attention, no one's working with you anymore, and that person from the business has disappeared. Was that problem the high priority? The prediction algorithm's not the high priority. The, prediction, the, the priority is stopping that pump from failing 40 times a year. Are you dealing with the right person in the business? Is that, is that group working as a team? Um, if they're not, if you're just working with one single person in the business, that person goes on to something else, you lose traction, it goes nowhere. So it's about, with problems, it's really about getting the right thing identified and make sure you understand how important that is to the business. And then also biting off the right piece of cake of that problem, not necessarily having to solve the whole thing. If you can take it down from 40 pump failures a year down to 30, that's still a great improvement. So you don't need to solve everything. Incentives. Incentives are very complicated. Um, I won't spend too much on time, uh, too much time on this. Suffice to say that as a business going out to an open call, we need to be 
diverse and inclusive as to how we incentivise people to come and work for us. Uh, if we're doing a crowdsourcing competition, a $10,000 prize may be good for some people in the community, but it may not be good for others. So we really need to think about that to ensure that open innovation is done in a, uh, in a sustainable and um, equitable manner. And this little graphic, as horrible as it is, uh, is the, the, the trifecta of perceived corporate evil. <laughs> IP, always a big issue. Procurement processes, always a big issue. And uh, having good contracts in place. Um, has anyone encountered any of these sort of issues when dealing with innovation so far? Yeah, there's, there's enough hands up there. Um, IP, all, all these things are really sticky. And, and for industry, uh, I think industry needs to get better at challenging themselves internally. And the people, there should be the champions of change internally that are willing to shake up the internal process and not be, uh, as soon as the legal team or the supply team put up a brick wall, get creative and find ways around that. Okay, don't think that it's there in front of you and you can't work around it. Um, you, you've, got, you've got to be creative, you've got to think <laughs> of what are the frameworks in the business you can use to your advantage to get around some of those. Uh, it's a big topic to explore, but it's, it's, um, it's not impossible and, and we've managed to make some good strides there. Similar with supply, uh, if you've got a young innovator coming along that wants to develop something for you, putting them on 60 day payment terms is probably not going to work. So how can you get creative to work around that? <coughs> Once again, work within your delegations of authority. If there's approval to uh, spend a smaller amount, can you have more smaller transactions instead of a bigger transaction? Um, really consider what the frameworks are that you have in place. For the innovators, uh, innovators need to understand this stuff and that this stuff is real. So they need to, um, I think sometimes, and uh, might be considered controversial, but take some of the emotion out of it and understand that no one's trying to can probably be different for different organisations, but there's, you know, the, the industry wants to deliver value. They're not there to, their core business is mining, it's not um, producing research data science algorithms, for example. But we'll go back before I get onto that one. I can't go back. Okay. So after this, all the wonderful magic happens. We release data, we release a problem, we've got good terms in place, and we want someone to come back something good, some nice, innovative new product. Now, I've called this the orphans of innovation. I was going to be a bit more morose and call it the innovation graveyard <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a guess that some of you have seen these things where we go out on an exercise, we get something back, it might be a data science model, it might be a prototype of something, and where does it end up? It ends up just sitting there idle and no one's using it. There is the positive side where, where uh, an initiative goes through and it becomes part of production. Um, but at least for ourselves, we've got, we've, got, we've got a lot of orphans running around and it's, it's troublesome. And these are the things we need to be considering. You know, where does this model live in a production environment? How does it improve and evolve over time? Uh, if you're delivering a prediction model, um, where does that sit? Where are you actually going to put that? Right, what is the infrastructure it's going to sit on? Where is it going to show some sort of visualisation? How are you going to make sure that it is not putting another screen in front of an operator where they've already got a plethora of things, too many things to look at? What are the support arrangements? So do you just drop it and walk away? Uh, if you're an industry, are you prepared to make sure that there is some sort of arrangement to make sure that that model gets better over time? Um, perhaps that, that model can actually deliver more value over time and actually provide the innovator with more work. And this one here, this is the change and adoption piece. This is the hardest piece of innovation, easily. Uh, having a conversation earlier um, where I was uh, sharing thoughts that you know pulling the data together is the hardest thing. It takes time, but it's not the hardest thing. Making sure that innovation sticks is huge. And whilst for some of us and, and probably you know those that have come here to this session can see the value. Despite what economists think, we are not rational. Okay? As an example, I've spent an inordinate amount of time trying different you know, task management apps and everything, but I still carry this damn thing around. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't, you know, that doesn't sink, it doesn't back up, and 
if anyone takes that tonight when I'm not looking, I'll be in a mess. Um, so you've got to think about that you're dealing with people, right? You're delivering technology, but you're dealing with people. And then there's the new weird and wacky challenges that will just pop out out of nowhere. So this is something that just unfolded quite recently. We put up our latest competition on our uh, platform, crowdsourcing platform with Unearthed, with wonderful intentions. We have a mine site in the Pilbara, it's warmish out there, and we are concerned about the hydration of our people. So we've got, we've got some conventional methods of me measuring hydration, they're not great, we want something better. So we've put this out as a crowdsourcing challenge. A few days later, there is an article on ABC, <laughs> about, um, which is a legitimate article about a different site and there's some controversial or controversy around how a certain site is um, asking women about their toilet habits. So, naturally, IT News jumps on board saying, New Chris Morning wants wearables to keep staff hydrated. That's all good. Reduce loose stops, <laughs> right? Just for that clickbait. So they've tried to tie what we're doing back to a topic of article. <laughs> Never a problem we've had to deal with in the past, but, you know, as we go along this journey, you're going to come across things that surprise you. Um, at the end of the day, any publicity is good publicity, but you get surprises, and it's it's okay, right? You just got to you just got to stick with it. So this is all about getting unstuck. Uh, it all sounds like a bit of a doom and gloom story, and hopefully the next three speakers are going to be a bit more positive and sorry to start on a bit of a downer. Um, what I'm really trying to share here is that uh, there it is a difficult road. Others are going through the same thing, so you know, don't feel as though you've got to stay within your silos. Reach out to your peers in different organisations. I'm always happy to engage, and I'm sure you know you all are here tonight. That's why you're coming here as a community. Um, it is it is sticky, but it's not impossible. And we've already seen that we can deliver great value through through what we're doing, through working with Unearthed, and um, really just work through it. I think. You know, the term disruption gets gets thrown around a bit, but really open innovation is somewhat dependent on it. And it's disruption in the sense of small things that you can do, small challenges that you can uh, have within your small group as, a, as an innovative company or within your organisation, uh, challenging your legal team, challenging your supply team, thinking of things differently. That is the sort of disruption that's going to move forward. Thank you.